Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. And I know I'm kind of late on this one, but today I want to go over the monthly report. We've got some new updates come to Star Citizen, and it's pretty exciting. 3.23 is in wave 1 PTU right now, and CNG is slowly uh, rolling up updates to uh, 3.23 PTU. I've been testing it a little bit, but nothing that i really think that i would want to make a video about at this point i think that wave one is not really in the best state right now it is uh difficult to record footage of it in my personal opinion i would like to wait for it to be kind of in a better state uh though also waiting on a couple of features it still does not have persistent hangers and it still does not have cargo elevators um so we're waiting on a few key features for CRG to roll out to uh this new update so i think it just kind of makes more sense to make more content about the game when it's in a little bit of a better state as you can see here in the background we have distribution center interiors okay so distribution centers is something that is in this patch uh, but we'll go through it we'll see what is going on with this update and what we have to look forward to okay so let's just dive right in ai features okay uh you know they're fixing bugs that's great AI uh, tech uh, they're focused on finalizing and polishing features for 323 all good stuff Work on planetary navigation was completed with the team now able to generate navigation mesh over an entire planet. This is really important to bring these locations to life. Um, we've kind of seen NPCs at outposts and I've seen some at distribution centers and they are pretty lifeless in my opinion. Now, I don't know if that comes down to silver performance or just their code and tech. Uh, CIG is always talking about these NPCs having different routines and things that are very immersive and realistic, but we just never get to see that in the game. NPCs are always standing on tables or walking in circles or just generally being cardboard cutouts. And uh, um, again, it's one of those things where I don't know if that's CIG being over ambitious with NPCs, honestly. If you were to throw an NPC and give them some kind of routine in the game to do, to just look more immersive, I don't know what that would accomplish at this point. Again, we really don't get missions from NPCs or anything like that. They are just kind of set dressing. So whatever CIG can find that works with this navigation tech where NPCs can walk anywhere they want, I think the idea is that, you know, NPCs could possibly ride trams and trains to make the transit system uh, look more active and alive um, and uh, 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 allow NPCs to go different places. Because remember, we're supposed to have um, NPC uh, missions where we essentially go out and pick up an NPC and drop them off at a location. So ideally NPCs will definitely need the ability to walk on and off our ships and walk around on plants and do all that kind of stuff. So this is very important tech for the future, but it's big tech. So, you know, again, we'll wait and see and, and uh, hopefully it works out. For boys, the team continue to implement new rules and finalize synchronization between server and client. It's good. That's important. The, the, the Mavac, I think it's called. It's the, the medium sized bird that flies around. They fly together. Um, there's a little harvestable, uh, that you can get for them that I assume you could just sell for money. It's interesting. Um, I haven't tested it out yet, of course, because, uh, the PTU is kind of up right now. I think, um, when we start seeing them, it could be very interesting. Animation. Animation team has been working on Space Cow, medium-sized bird, and a predator wolf-like creature, which we know the Space Cow 
is the quasi grazer the medium-sized bird is the mawak and the wolf-like uh creature is um the the copian uh art characters in march the character art team completed a range of uh, branded racing flight suits and continued working on outfits for the headhunters gang character concept art team began exploring specialist armors and worked on handoff sheets so Specialist armors are what CAG want to do where they essentially have an armor set that is better for mining or an armor set that is better for combat. They have, let's say a combat armor has more ports for weapons, more ports for ammo, more ports for med pens and stuff like that. So if you have like a medical armor suit, maybe it has a ton of ports for med pens. Maybe it has more than one uh med tool holster on it uh maybe it has like a, a special backpack that can be equipped to this armor that you can't equip to any other armor so these specializations uh these specialized armors um uh, are gear that will enable you to do some specific gameplay um uh, that's one thing that's coming out that I think would be interesting, and then, you know I have a kind of wait and add uh, a wait and see attitude about it. I have no idea what it's going to be like in the game, uh, so all we can really do is wait and see. And then the racing flight suits, you know, that's kind of cool. It's it's either a um, uh, subscriber flare item or some kind of event item, and then headhunters gang. Uh, they've been working on that for a while. Art ships. Okay, March saw progress on the RSI Zeus. I know a lot of people are excited about that. But here's the kicker. Gray box was completed. Okay. And all functionality has been validated. Which, again, it shouldn't be too much of a big deal. Because the Zeus doesn't really have any new tech in the ship. It's, you know, there's a cargo variant. There's a... Uh, a bounty hunting variant and there's an exploration variant um all that tech is already in the game with the ship currently in the beauty and polish phase okay stage habitation and the central hallways made significant progress and are approaching completion while the cargo hold continues to progress with the loading ramps main piston structure improving rapidly as well as the ramp Interior and exterior. The landing gear is nearly complete with and the overall exterior continues to progress too. These are all good and very exciting things. The Zeus is gonna be an extremely popular ship. I have no idea, you know, uh, how the community is gonna to react to it when it finally lands. I know a lot of people are eagerly waiting for the ship. People are estimating that it might land it during Invictus. I think that would be a really good time to uh, for CIG to have a sale of the ship, as well as Legionnaire. The Amber Legionnaire is is white box complete, with the team currently waiting on gameplay validation. Okay, so that kind of sounds like the gameplay validation stage is where the ship has its tech added to it, and that would you know more than likely be hacking in the game, an ability for the ship to dock with other ships and uh, essentially hack the door open and get in the ship to board it. Now, uh, the number of ships that have an, uh, a docking collar, uh, ships like um, the Hammerhead, the 890 Jump, um, I believe the Halsey and the Reclaimer. So there's about as many ships as you can count on one hand that this ship could be used with. Um, unless, of course, we get other large ships, uh, you know, maybe the Polaris, for instance. Uh, but yeah, again, uh, I'm, I don't expect the Polaris to drop. I just think that CIG will get, uh, kind of the minimal functionality in, like it will, it will work. It will be able to dock with another ship. And then CIG will call it tier zero and move on to something else. <laughs> you know, I don't think that it will be, you'll have missions and all this stuff with it. There's just no way. 
The team's work on the resource network began with 10 ships nearing completion, some of which receive the update list of ship items. Following gameplay validation, relay locations will be polished. Update work on a legacy ship continued too, with updates to dash, cockpit, and some exterior housings. I think this update to a legacy ship, I think what they're talking about here, this is um, the Retaliator because they uh, recently added the Retaliator to the release view. That ship will be the first ship with modularity and it is getting a gold standard pass. And CAG also confirmed that this is the, uh, the cockpit, the flight seat for the Zeus. So this is the seat that you will be looking at when you're on Zeus. We'll continue on production for base building with gameplay features working closely with art and design to refine the requirements and define metrics. So then we have graphics, VFX, programming, and planet tech, which I'm, you know, for all intents and purposes, just going to skip because, um, you know, we know they're working on Vulcan. They just recently added Vulcan to the new uh ptu patch now it was in before but you kind of had to do a hacky thing to get it working now that it's just a, a a menu item a setting that you can change you restart your game and you're running in vulcan there are not a huge amount of uh you know differences in performance because right now cig has vulcan limited to just one core on the cpu and they're going to enable multi-core uh in a later date so that's gonna be really exciting again they're talking about global illumination the clouds and stuff like that in-game branding interactables here we can see you know a picture of the item bank you know this looks like it might be grim hex or something uh, explosive containers will be worked and now replace static missions in level so they uh will now explode if players shoot them Okay, and we have kind of uh, flammable things here. Fire extinguisher recharge cabinets progress through gray rocks and are currently being taken to final, while cargo hover trolleys are being finalized in preparation for the cargo hangar update. Okay, and that's pretty cool. And this is essentially where you will put the fire extinguisher and it will recharge. Uh, that's cool. We've seen these things in game already, but not with the fire extinguisher in it. So this is kind of what the fire extinguisher looks like. And uh, again, we saw fire propagation uh, at Citizen Con this year and people are putting other fires running around and acting crazy. So that will come in a future update of lighting. This is the distribution centers. It's what they look like on the outside. The roads that you can drive around in them the very big locations okay locations last month saw the location team policing content for alpha 4.0 okay they also closed out the upcoming distribution centers which i i don't think they should have uh <laughs> it's definitely a lot more work to do there adding content and quality to give players the best possible experience on launch they also kicked off preparation for new mandates officially beginning in q2 and again we're already in q2 the landing zone team finalized file art for instance hangers and prepared them for implementation across the verse. Happy to hear that. I hope to see them talk about it more soon. Mission design. Okay, this is kind of uh, talking about a bunch of different stuff. Find the feedback on overdrive initiative. I don't really care about that. Work progressed on the upcoming cargo hauling missions. That's great with players being tasked with hauling tracked goods from one location to another as requested by a shipping company, okay, with a consistent payout of roughly 20% of the cargo's value. That's very good. A hauler's income will be more stable than that of a commodity trader who buys low and sells high as the market fluctuates. Still, once a cargo hauler gets comfortable with the profession, they might try their luck at commodity trading. Okay. While the player is legally allowed to transport the goods, uh, they do not own them. As a result, lawful stores across Santa will not buy these commodities to sell the shipment rather than delivering it. The player must navigate to a fence, uh, a no questions asked shop 
often located uh, in an unmonitored area of Stanton. However, due to its tracked nature, this cargo fetches a significantly lower price than ordinary sandbox commodities. So that's kind of the thing that CIG is going to use to differentiate these two gameplay styles so that um, uh, pirates who go after haulers and not traders, they really won't make anywhere near as much money. And so the uh, it will kind of push pirates and uh, PVPers to go after traders and not haulers. So haulers uh, could kind of uh, get their reputation or whatever. Because the hauling gameplay is kind of like the more entry level gameplay and the trading gameplay is kind of the more advanced gameplay. That's essentially what CIG's, uh, what it looks like CIG is trying to set it up to be. The upcoming addition to wildlife in the PU mission design began work on related content building three mission variants. Oh, and to talk about that, I think uh, the devs also confirmed that you will be able to scan the cargo uh, with the multi tool, but you will not be able to scan the cargo from your ship. So they, I think they said that's coming at a later date. Kill X amount. This uh, extermination population control mission task players with killing a predetermined number of animals on a planet. Players must locate the animals themselves. Clear location. This will be a specific location that requires having the animal population dealt with. Kill and collect. This is one of the first resource collection mission types where players must locate animals and collect their resources. Following a recent hire, Following recent hire, some older mission modules were refactored, such as destroy legal satellites mission, received a small facelift, and uh, blockade runner, which, you know, a small change was made to ensure event stays fun and engaging for players. Work on Xenotrek global events continued. Okay, narrative, they're working on stuff. Online technology, they're working on stuff. R&D, temporal render mode, they're working on stuff. Gen 12, Vulcan. Vulcan, we talked about that. Tech design. Okay. Uh, 323 and beyond. Item banks. New rundown. Uh, variant entity setting up. State machines and animations. Hangers were supported alongside uh, ship flight, including iteration on new AI behaviors. Support was given to QA. Okay, all good stuff. UI last month, the Montreal-based UI team worked closely with the core gameplay. Okay, UI is important, VFX. Okay, so that's it for the monthly report. The big takeaways here is that the Zeus is closer than we thought. So, yeah, 323 is a very exciting patch. A lot of stuff is coming with it. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I think it needs a lot of time in the oven. Um... I think CIG is being very ambitious with their plans for this year. I think they need to kind of chill out a little bit. Just make a good experience for players and uh, then get back on the, uh, you know, we're super ambitious. Go, go, go. Um, because again, it is, you know, half of April as of recording this video and uh, PTU is still in a rough state. A lot of features are not in yet. I want them to just get it into a good place so people can get excited about it again. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. This is a very interesting monthly report. I know I was late on this one. I will try to be a little bit faster in the future. Uh, good content is on the way. There's a lot of videos to be made. So like I always say at the end of these videos, you guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos, subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Salut.